Hi everybody. My name is Sheila Landry and I'm a decorative painter and today's video is the first in a series that I'm going to be doing showing how to highlight and shade using acrylic paints and some really um, we want some really bright effects. I recently finished these little elves um, by France Curian, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I'll have links for her pattern in the video description. And she did hers in a paint brand called Josonia, which I don't have. Um, Josonia paints are acrylic, but they act a little more like oil and they have a longer open time. And my paint of choice usually is Deco Art Americana. And I wanted to achieve the same bright effects that France did on hers using DecoArt paints. So it's a little bit more um, complicated or many a few more steps than just a base shade and highlight. You go back and forth a little bit. You do some glazing and layers. And a lot of people seemed interested about it, so I decided to do a short video series um, on showing how, what colors I use to achieve this nice effect. So what I'm going to do is the basic six colors, um, and each video will hopefully be short, so you don't have to spend a lot of time, but I'm going to take you through the steps that I used for um, creating the effects. Now, I just use these little ice skates. They're, um, I had extra surfaces. They're surfaces that I offer. And this video is the first one, and we're gonna work on the yellows. We're gonna get this nice effect by painting the skate yellow. Um, I guess to start off with, I base coated a couple coats of golden straw for this shade of yellow and I sanded in between very lightly with a sanding sponge a very fine grain so the surface is smooth and that's important we want to have a nice smooth surface to paint on so you won't see any ridges or anything like that and I'm gonna keep this off screen but I have a wet palette which is a palette with a sponge and a piece of paper over it and it keeps your paint a little um, dry time open time longer so and I this is my clean water I have a big um, container of water for rinsing my brushes but this is the water I use these little cups here for when I do float shading and things like that where I need clean water so I'm gonna begin as I said we based this and dried this and we're going to start to highlight first and this is going to be a series of steps and layers and what I'm going to start with is warm white now that may be a little extreme but you'll see if you bear with me the process is pretty much the same for all the colors but I'll, I'll go through each of them quickly um, I'm using a Deerfoot half inch brush that has short bristles you could also use a dome brush if you have a large one like that um, here's a dome I think this is dynasty but I also have dome domes by um, deco art and I want to pick up a little bit of paint on the brush and I'm going to scrub most of it off onto the paper towel and this is important to get most of it off and I'm going to start a very light touch dry brushing the central areas that I want highlighted. I'm hoping you can see that. It's very subtle. It takes a little time. It's not going to happen all at once. If you get streaks, you have too much paint on your brush. And you're going to start to really highlight the center. And now on the elves, I did these areas, the center, and a little bit on the shoulders. And 
and it's going to look chalky and a little bit washed out, but that's okay. Um, when I loaded the brush, there was no water on it. I want to make sure you know that. And then I used a good quality paper towel and really scrubbed it off so there's hardly any. So I hope you can see a difference there. The next thing I'm going to do is glaze this. This won't take time to dry because it is almost dry. And I'm going to use a transparent bright color for this. So it depends what you're using for um, your base colors or what colors you want to achieve. This, for me, this time I'm using yellow light. It's a very um, bright yellow, but it's also transparent. And you want it somewhat transparent because you want, you want it to show through. You want the white to show through. Now this time I'm dampening my brush. And I'm picking up a little paint. You don't want a lot. You're going to... Here, I'll pull this in here so you can see. I'm kind of picking it up. And you can see on the palette how transparent that color is. And I'm going to start to go over that and glaze it. This is called glazing. And you can see right away how it's bringing up that color without looking, it takes that chalkiness away from the white, but you're going to see the yellow through it as well, and it's going to make it look brighter. See how fast that was? Next thing we'll do is let this dry, and I will be back. I think I'm going to be cutting back and forth on these um, videos because it's important to let them dry. This is where it's nice to do several things at once. So I'll be back as soon as this piece is dry. Okay, the glazing is dried, the yellow light glazing. The next step I want to do is start to add the shading color. Now this also goes in a couple steps. And the first thing I'm going to do is float shade with terracotta I have pulled two colors here I pulled they're in the same family but one is darker this one's burnt sienna terracotta is lighter we're gonna do this step by step and it'll give a nice gradual um, change of color so I put a little bit of terracotta on my palette I guess I should show. I'll drag it in. And it, mine was thick. And I'm going to just take a little on the end. And you'll see I'm blending it on my brush. This is a 3 8 shader, angle shader. And it's a ruby satin by silver, which I like. It's a very stiff brush. It's nice for control. And I like doing little stuff, so I like control. So I'm blending the terracotta on my brush, picking up a little water, and then I'm going to start to shade around my piece. I didn't paint the blades because I'm going to go over that with silver at the end. I don't even know what I'm going to do with this. I might make a pattern of some funky bright colored ice skates, but I thought they were just something nice that gave us enough room to show how to do. So I'm starting on my edges here. You want to blend everything in. You don't want a line, that's a water line for the most part, but if you see that you're getting a paint line, take the, the heel of your brush, which is the short end, and kind of blend it in as you go. I don't know what I'm going to do on the heel of the boots yet. But we'll just go around them for now. And we don't want this too dark. We're not going to do it all at once, as I said. I, When I was taught painting, there were like three steps. You base coat, and then you highlight, and you float shade. And that was it. And as we become better painters, we want to learn how to do a little bit more advanced techniques. 
and sometimes we forget that um, it's more than three steps to, to achieve something that looks really deep and professional and brings your painting up to a nice level. Okay, so I'm going to go around there. Okay, they're pretty even. Okay, again, I'm going to let this dry, and I'll be right back in a minute. Okay, this layer dried, the float shade, and you could see there's a little bit of a line there from the water. But I left it in because it's really not going to matter, and I'm going to show you. The next thing we're going to do is go back to our three-quarter inch shader. One thing I wanted to point out, like, these are both low Cornell half inch three quarter shaders. Well, this is actually half inch, that's three quarters, and um, they look almost the same at this point. They're both well used. And I like the brushes for dry brushing with the shorter tips. So I don't know if I wore this one down or what, but I just feel like I get more control. Sometimes when it's big like this, you get too much paint on it, which wouldn't matter for that first. Um, dry brushing but as you go on you might want something with more control so kind of hang on to your brushes that you use now I'm going to um, use the same color this is terracotta again and I'm just going to pick up a little bit on the tips of the dry brush and you'll be able to see this better on this one and scrub it off the paper towel and what I'm going to do is pull this float in. So I'm going to start very gently. You always kind of want to test the water. Like don't just dive in. Just make sure that your brush doesn't have too much paint on it. And you can see I'm just very lightly adding some color in. The reason I like to dry brush this is because there's more control. I'm going to go over a lot of that highlight, but we're going to go back and re-highlight it. As I said, it's layers. And kind of go around your edges, leaving your center. Now see, there's where that line is. I think you could see that. And I'm just kind of going to scrub it in right now. So what it does is it makes the float wider and it's a little bit more, um, it's not as even, I guess. It looks more painterly, like see on, on him. It's not just a flat line that's going across. And I like this effect for this type of project. Okay, so when we're done with that, we're going to go to our next deeper color, which is Burnt Sienna. Now, again, this, this doesn't need much time to dry because it's dry brushed on. And you can see how little paint I used. I used barely any. And I'm going to take my 3 8 inch shader again, load it with the darker color, The burnt sienna and now you can see it's really getting a nice contrast now I'm just float shading maybe an eighth of an inch in over with the paint that I previously but see since these colors are in the same family and go well together they just gradually meld into each other and it looks really nice. So I'll go around quick. Once I figure this out, I mean, it went really quick. The first one took longer, of course.
and of course every piece won't have it floated evenly around everything but the scapes will maybe more on the bottom and notice when I float I do little choppy strokes it's not just one pull of the brush Be careful on your corners, not to pull off what you just put on and kind of blend it. Okay, so you can see you're getting a nice deep, deep um, graduate, gradual change of color. Okay, now I need to let this dry again and then I will be back again. Okay, the next thing that I did, since the shading looks really good now, it's not completely done, but it looks nice. Um, we did lose a lot of the highlight in the middle, so we're going to go back and do the highlights again. Another layer. A dry brush. This was clean and dry, and I picked up a little bit of paint. And I'm going to remove it, and I'm going to go back in the middle again. and re-highlight things. Now this I'm using a little more of a tapping. Now see, I'll get rid of this line at this point. And of course, if you're in a smaller area, you use a smaller brush. But you want to pull up those highlights again. Not too much. Not you're going to go less each time we're working our way in. So there will be less maybe here. Maybe we want a little highlight on the toe of the skate. Maybe the light's coming from there. But we want a pretty light in the middle and up here. I'm going to go a little tiny bit on the top too. Okay. Now, back to our yellow light, 3 8 angle. You could use a softer brush if you want for this, but I like this brush. And again, we're going to wash it. And see, by putting that light wash, it takes away that chalky look and gives it a nice, warm, but brilliant light. All we're doing is toning this. We're toning down the white we put on the highlights. And it's nice with the wash because you can move it around. Like say I want, I'm going to wipe my brush, say I want more white there. You could kind of almost put clean water and pull off some of the, some of the yellow if you want to get it back up okay a black and I'll put it back on so it's very controlled you just have to take baby steps with these and it's relaxing and fun it's not stressful that way okay now I'm going to let this dry one more time. A little more there. And I will be back again. Okay, we're all dry. And the last, um, I want one more shade on this. And I was debating on using a dark color like asphaltium or a brown. But since these have reddish tones in them, I decided to use cranberry wine and since that's a brownish red it's still transparent it's gonna look really nice with the gold and yellow tones 
So what I'm going to do is just take a little bit and blend. And look at the nice depth that gives. Sometimes when you use these unexpected colors, um, they really make a difference. Now that's heavy on there, but I'm just going to go back and blend it. And since there were a lot of reds in this project, I really think that looks nice. See the difference from one side to the other of the contrast. And that's what we're looking for. We want that brilliant contrast. It's really going to make it pop. And surprisingly enough, I used no sparkles on this project so far anyway. Which for me is unheard of. Okay, I'm just, I'm just going around on these. Like I said, they're just kind of to basically show you the colors. Go around the heel. Now see the difference that makes. It really stands out now. And as a final, I say final, but you still play. You can play with it, but don't play too much. Is I'm going to give it a little bit more of the white highlight in the middle. One more, one more layer of highlight to really make it stand out nice. In this you'll just want to do on the highest areas just a little bit maybe up by the top more And you could even take a smaller brush with the white and do the very, very center areas, almost white. Now, if you get too bright, you just wash it back a little with the yellow, with the clean brush. There we go. With the yellow light. You could tone it. You don't want it to look chalky. You want it to look bright. So just little at a time. Layers. Okay, so that was how it started. And that's how it finished. Okay. I hope you like this. Um, I'm going to do the other colors in separate videos so you could just see the colors you're working on or watch them all, but then you don't have to spend an afternoon looking for them. Thanks for watching.